Increasing, decreasing, and critical points of f of x. The learning goals for this video include being able to identify critical points of f of x, and once you've found critical po points of f of x, determining whether the critical points are extrema or not. First, let's give a definition of what it means for a function to be increasing or decreasing. We say a function is increasing on some interval if for any two points in the interval, if we evaluate the function at the lower value, it ends up being smaller than the function evaluated at the higher value of x. And you can see that easily in a diagram when you plug in a low value of x here, you'll see the value of the function is lower than at a higher value of x. So we say a function is decreasing on some interval if the opposite is true, that is if we evaluate at a lower value of x, we get a higher value for the function than if we go to higher values of x. You'll notice in this definition there's no reference to f prime of x. In fact, for functions that are not differentiable, we can still talk about whether they are increasing or decreasing. So how do we connect the increasing or decreasing nature of a function with its derivative? Suppose we have a point x and the function is increasing around that point. So we can compare two values, let's say f at a higher value of x, let's say at x plus h, with that at a lower value, and we know that the value at x plus h will be greater than at f, that, and then f is at x. So when we take a difference, we know this difference will have to be positive. This difference fits into the definition of the derivative in such a way that as long as h is positive, we know that this whole quantity will be a positive quantity. And so that means that f prime of x will be greater than or equal to 0 when we take the limit as h goes to 0. The equal sign creeps in as part of a technical issue with limits that I won't talk about here. The other thing I won't talk about but I'll state is that the opposite is true. If we know that f prime is positive, then we can conclude that f of x is increasing. So this is what ties the sign of the derivative to the increasing or decreasing behavior of a function. So what is an extremum? A point x equal a is a local minimum of f of x. If the value of the function is greater than f of a everywhere in a neighborhood around a. So let's illustrate this just to be sure we get the full meaning of the definition. Which of the following would you consider a minimum? And you'll notice all of these have the property that right at the low point, or that there is a low point, everywhere nearby the function has higher values. In this case the function is differentiable, in this case it's not differentiable, and in the third case it's not even continuous. All of these count as local minima even though the derivative is not defined. When the derivative is defined at the minimum, then it must look like a. And that's the case that we'll talk about in the next few slides. So a point is a local maximum. If the opposite is true, that is, the value of the function is lower than the value at a in a nearby set of values of x, in all nearby values of x. And so now we can go on to figuring out how to find these extremum. So critical points will be a tool for doing so, even though they don't always give us extremum. So a critical point of f is a point x equal a at which the derivative of x, sorry, the derivative of f is equal to 0, or it could also be a point where the derivative is not defined. But as I said, we're going to focus on the case where the derivative is defined and is equal to 0. So how do we use critical points? If f prime changes sign at a critical point, then the critical point is an extremum. If the derivative does not change sign at the critical point, then the critical point is not an extremum of f of x. So let's go over to Desmos for a couple examples. So what you see here is a quadratic function and its derivative, which is a straight line. And you'll notice the derivative goes through 0 right at the point minus 6. And so there is a flat spot in the function here. This one happens to be a minimum. Why is that? Because the slope started negative, meaning the function was decreasing initially. The slope went through 0 and crossed to the other side to be positive. That means the function will be decreasing initially, 
it'll flatten out and then it'll increase. So we end up with a critical point that is an extremum and in this case it's a minimum. What happens if we have the opposite scenario where the slope is now positive initially, goes through zero and then goes negative? Well in that case we're increasing, we hit a flat spot, and then we're decreasing afterward. And this type of crossing from positive to negative slope gives us a maximum. Now the third case is a case in which the derivative starts positive, hits zero, but does not cross negative. It turns around and goes positive again. And when that happens, the function is increasing, reaches a flat spot, and increases again. So we have neither a minimum nor a maximum, and in this case we don't have an extremum at all. In the next video we'll discuss what this scenario actually is. So let's go back to our slides. So let's summarize. A critical point is an extremum when f prime of x changes sign at x equal a. So in order to determine whether it's changing sign there are a couple things we can do. One thing is we can plug in values but another thing we can do, if f prime is differentiable at x equal a, then we can calculate the second derivative of f at the point and test to see whether it's zero or not. If the second derivative is not zero, then we know that f prime must be increasing or decreasing as it goes through zero. If f double prime is positive, then f prime as it goes through zero must be going from below zero to above. So it goes from negative to positive. And that means that x equal a is a minimum. If f double prime at a is negative, that means that f prime is decreasing. And as it goes through zero, that means it has to go from positive through zero to a negative value. So that means that x equal a is a max of the function. Let's go back to Desmos quickly and see what the second derivative of a, what the second derivative tells us about the functions that we looked at earlier. So here I've added in in green the second derivative. So we have the function in blue, its derivative in orange, and the second derivative of the function in green. And what you'll notice is that because the derivative goes from negative to zero to positive, it's increasing. So that means its rate of change is positive, which means its second derivative is positive. The second derivative also happens to be constant just because we're dealing with a quadratic. That positive second derivative tells us that the extremum is a minimum. And that has to do with the crossing from minus to zero to plus, an increasing value of the derivative of f prime. The next situation that we looked at was this one where we had a function whose derivative went from positive to zero to negative. And in this case, when we calculate the derivative of that derivative, we find that it's negative. It's a decreasing, the derivative is a decreasing function. And that corresponds to a maximum in the original function. Finally, when we go over and look at the third example, we had an increasing function that flattened out and then continued to increase because the derivative was positive, went to zero, and turned around. And in that case, we see that right at the critical point, the second derivative is actually zero. So we don't get any information about what is happening to f prime as we go through zero here. And that is why we cannot conclude that this critical point is an extreme. So what can we conclude? Well, we have to do something else to determine whether f prime turns around or crosses. We know that it crosses, if it crosses, it has to cross flat. And from this picture, we clearly see that it doesn't cross. So the solution is to evaluate the derivative of the function on both sides. So if we go to, let's say, 5.9, and evaluate the derivative, we find a positive value. If we go to 6.1 and evaluate the derivative, we also find a positive value. And so from that, we can conclude that the derivative did not change sign as we crossed. But keep in mind that f double prime 
equals zero doesn't actually give us any more information because it could either cross or not cross in a very flat way. So that's why we have to check f prime.